We don't just do rhinoplasty, we do a lot of facelifts here at Profiles. And one of the most important questions that a lot of patients ask is how do you avoid poor scarring in a facelift? Yeah, probably one of the most significant concerns for patients is having a facelift that's visible to other people where they know something's been done. And avoiding really poor scars and facelifts is something that is absolutely doable and should happen with every single case. And it has to do with how we design the incisions and how the tension is placed during the surgery. Yeah, so perhaps the first and most important part of that is step one, just where do you actually put the incisions. Here profiles, if we use Dr. Lichter as an example, you know, for most patients, and I'm going to first talk about women, you're going to really carry the incision just at the very front part of the ear, and then the rest of the incision is going to go on the inside along the tragus down in here, this part of the ear is the tragus, and then just in front of the earlobe, and then the rest of the incision goes in the crease behind the ear where you're not going to see anything. Very rarely we might need to carry an extra limb out into the back here just at the top. Again, the hair will hide all that incision. So that's the most important part is really how do you carry that incision and get the lift without having to extend the incision where some surgeons will carry that incision up into the temporal region or again forward. Um, we don't like to do that because those incisions oftentimes will reveal themselves. Yeah, when you carry the incision into the hairline, it can sometimes cause the hair itself to be pulled up and that limits the way women can style their hair, then wearing their hair back can be a problem. So we avoid that entirely. Yeah, you would, in those cases, you're gonna get the hair tuft here elevated in women, and that's really an unnatural look. It makes it very difficult for women to wear their hair up. The other way to avoid really uh, widened scars or poor scars is in the way the lift is done. Uh, a lot of the short scar facelifts that depend very heavily on a lot of tension on the skin itself can create problems later on because too much tension on the skin can cause the skin to pull back and as contraction happens you might get the earlobe pulling down, you may have the incision actually widen as it's healing and, and create problems. Yeah, those patients oftentimes will get again a, a white scar either in the front of the ear in this area or if the ear pulls down you get what's called a pixie ear deformity. Those sorts of things really should never happen. It often indicates that the surgeon, when they were doing the surgery, just did much more of a skin pull rather than a real facelift where they do most of the work on the SMAS. It's really important and what we do all the time in our case is tell patients the most important part of the facelift procedure is actually all the work underneath the skin and subsequently we're going to place the skin back and remove the excess skin, but not really pull and tug. That way you get a real natural look, you don't get that windswept appearance, and also the scar heals the most favorably. So the long story short is that scarring really should not be an issue in facelifts. And when it's designed and done properly and with care, you really should expect a fantastic result. Yeah, we welcome you to look at all our patients online. You'll, you can really get close-up views of them and see that really you're not gonna notice any scars at all.